Hey everyone, welcome back to another Exos Heroes video. So today's video, we're going to discuss all the blue fate cores and their rankings. Okay, so we're going to consider actually two things that they will be giving. So one is the buffs that they give and also their hero kit. Okay, to start off at number six. Okay, we have two Paki. So Tupaki is actually a fate core that grants buffs to heroes from North Vaughn Frosty, okay? So combat power, attack, HP, and defense buffs. Again, for those of you who don't know um, how to increase the buffs of your blue fate cores, you just have to fusion other copies of that specific blue fate core, okay? So so again she uh he is actually in number six let's take a look at his his passive so more or less he has passive heart strike thrust as well thrust is actually a counter for um mostly defensive uh heroes so it gives stun to the opponents when they are hit okay so heart strike is afflicts heart strike level one to an enemy with the highest current health at the start of the battle so increase level of the mark when a mark target is damaged by an ally with hard strike so again each level of strike in adds a different layer of different layer of uh, usually it's, it's usually debuff so decrease attack speed decrease defense and damage to all enemies upon activation so and it, it has blind or the enemy has blind so Again, that is his passive. Let's go to his S1. So S1 is a one mana skill, deals 150 depression damage to one enemy, afflicts the target with three so for three turns, and the last would be his S2, axe bombing. It's dealing 750 percent damage to one enemy, and it's a four mana. Why is he in number six? Because again, um, in terms of the buffs he gives, um. North Von Frosty is actually out right now in the meta. And they are actually still there in terms of tag. But the kit of Topaki is actually not really good. If you, you know, if you have other choices, you could bring other other fate cores or other blue fate cores to bring even in PvE. So again, passive S1, S2 are they're very, very low. In terms of they're very not low. They're they're not worth bringing actually so again that is why he is ranked in number six okay so rank number five is fc yao so fc yao again gives buffs to historic republic again combat power attack hp and defense so all heroes of historic republic and most notable of these heroes is janai and shell and fc adams um, again, I, for, I forgot to mention a while ago for Tupaki, most notable would be Shufraken, Valentina, Iris, um, and FC Ramji. But moving on to um, Fate Core Yao. Actually, Fate Core Yao and Fate Core Tupaki can be inter you know, interchanged because again, for her, there are only three um, story heroes that will really benefit. Again... As I mentioned, FC Junai, FC Shell, and FC Adams. But again, if you compare her kit to to Tupaki, she has a better kit. Her passive is not better than Tupaki, but again, Flop Flop is actually a is a delaying tactic and target with modification. Then there is Summer's Blessing here, which is actually very good if you have Frost Heroes on the opposing side. And also, for her S1, it's an increased attack on all allies, refreshing 8 tri trigrams by 29% of own attacks so for 8 turns. And the last one is dealing 450% damage to one enemy, resets turn if the target dies. Okay, so 4 mana spell as well. So, actually for these two, they're a bit interchangeable. The only, the only advantage that FC Yao has over FC Tupaki is that the three heroes that I mentioned, again, FC Jina, FC Shell, and uh, FC Adams, are actually more used in PvP. That is why her buff is actually crucial as well in giving to Historis Republic. 
right now buffs for 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 what do you call this for north one frosty they have been out and that is why again as of now yao is more valuable than fc tupaki okay. fc yao here is at number five okay so for our fourth one we have here fc eden so he actually grants buffs to Greenland heroes. So, combat power again, attack, HP, and defense. So, let's take a look at his kit. So, um, he has the passive of Idol. So, Idol 1, Superstar, and Fan Club. And for his skills, you have there... This is actually a good S1. Record mana 4, deals 525 piercing damage to one enemy. Very useful, very useful again in sniping. It's it's called beat knife for a reason. So very good S1. And for his S2, it's a AOE required mana one. Very good as well. Low cost, um, low cost uh, spell. So deals 51% damage to all enemies. Poison target, dealing 31% damage every turn for two turns okay why is he in number four and why is he, he he isn't lower okay right now greenland heroes are still good in pvp meta that is why his buffs are very are are way better compared to the buffs for stories because again stories there are only three core and the rest you know there aren't that much but for greenland you have their Tantalo, you have Bathory, you have Talia, you have Rera. So again, very good buffs and very good for PvP. And also for his kit, you can actually use his kit. It is very usable. It's usable in in some of some of the players who don't have um who don't have other heroes. He might even be used in PvP tag. So again, good for PvP tag and probably in pve okay so the fourth one that we have is sorry the third one that we have is fc rachel so for fc rachel he gives buffs to obviously Ninombe. and if you can see his kit his kit actually is is similar to his gold fate core and um it's 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 lesser in damage but more on utility of the spells okay so the reason why he's in three number one um lenombe is the top nation right now in terms of pvp that is why he is good but again most of you guys would not use him for pvp because you have um fc rachel for the gold fate core okay so again um this fc is not really affected by core memory only the gold fate core that is why usage for this one would really drop and you won't really use him mostly in any content um unless if you have if you don't have the gold fate core so again for those who have gold fate cores the blue one is not usually used in combat he is just there for the added buffs that he gives to linombe so that's it that that is it for fc rachel again um um, it was actually for me it was a shock because again there's a gold and there's a blue so which you know and the kits don't really dif uh, differ that much so why would they you know give this to rachel the blue fate core only the gold is actually being used right now especially in pvp especially pvp okay so here is my girl fc sabrina so sabrina gives buffs actually to all attack type heroes combat power and attack percentage okay again for you to increase the certain the percentage you have to fuse copies of this specific fc and all of the fcs that i've talked about in this video so let's go to her spells so again she's actually good in the dragon because of dragonite's blessing she also has counter superstar and the other one is fan club so she belongs to idol one and it's a good passive by the way and for her s1 re required mana one deals 300 percent damage to an enemy and her s2 is a burst spell which is very good deals 127 percent damage to all enemies afflicts targets with burn dealing 55 percent damage 
every turn for three turns. Again, why is she at number two? Because she gives a global buff not just limited to her, what do you call this, to a nation, but a global buffs to attack type heroes. That's one. Number two is her kit is actually very usable in PvP, especially in tag PvP. Um, she has been used actually even for beginners. And for those who don't have enough, they, she is actually very usable in your PvP tag. Okay? So that is why she is at number two. Okay, so for our number one... Uh, what they call it, number one blue FC, it would be Black Moon Baraka. Why is that? Number one, because of the buff. Wasted Red is currently in my ranking, number two in terms of nation, and, you know, he, he actually plays a big part of that. And also, his kit is actually one of a first guardian. So again, giving you know giving uh giving buffs in terms of barrier in terms of counter wrath dragon scale you name it this this fc is actually or this fate core is actually good even if you don't have uh the the black fate core of baraka he can actually be used in pvp but again um, the Black Fate Core is, is best because of the core memory. But, but if you don't have, he is actually being used in PvP, not in PvP tag. That is why his Fate Core is actually best among the blue Fate Cores. So let's finish up his S1. So required 2, deals 225 damage to 1 enemy, resets turn if the target dies, steals 1 mana, and grants two mana back to the uh, back row ally if target is disheartened and more or less that is the same so steals one mana from target and grants two mana again for the s2 but deals 525 percent damage to one enemy at three mana cost only so again in terms of kit he is actually usable in pvp um i think he's the only one here that you can use in pvp the rest at most you'd be using in pvp tag or only in pve but in terms of in terms of buff again very um very crucial because um wasted red is at number two right now in terms of nation and number one would be the nombe okay so again if you don't <clears throat> if you don't have black fate core baraka you actually can use the blue one for your pvp okay guys so more or less that is it so if you have any questions on this video comments on the fc i might be wrong in terms of my ranking so please comment down if you want a different ranking so what is your own ranking would you rank tupaki as number one or yao as number one or number two would you rank scarlet as number four or number five please suggest down or put it down in the comment section below again guys this is just my my opinion based on my experience in playing the game and based on the applications of these blue fate cores okay anyway guys for those of you who haven't subscribed yet around 85 percent of my viewers haven't subscribed and if you do this helps my channel very much okay take care stay safe this is the Warden, and I'm out of here.